Okay, so I'm going to show you some cases. Um, this is the first case of a child, 16-year-old um, rugby player. So an athlete who was really bothered by headaches, and uh, especially after a Valsalva maneuver. So Valsalva is when you strain against a closed uh, glottis. And uh, this would elicit usually an occipital type of headache or sneezing or coughing or something would do the same thing. And it's, it's quite a typical uh, feature of this um, condition. His neurological exam was normal, including the uh, abdominal reflexes and so on. There's no scoliosis in this child's case. So 16 year old, so older uh, child adolescent. And there you can see the tonsils going down past the frame of magnum, which I'm showing you here. And there's no syrinx in the spinal cord. So this is a video that shows the bony exposure. The occipital bone is here. We've already opened the dura now. I open it in kind of a Y-shaped uh, pattern. And now we're mobilizing. These are the cerebellar tonsils. We're just mobilizing them to get them to be smaller, rounded, to come up towards the uh, obex. And you, at the end of the day, you want to be able to see the uh, obex because that tells you that you've um, identified the opening of the uh, the bottom part of the fourth ventricle that allows then the CSF to come out and to circulate uh, properly. And uh, getting back to this case, this was the preoperative analysis, and uh, this is post-op. So clearly, I think you can see the difference. The tonsils, cerebellar tonsils, have been kind of dragged down here. And now after we did the uh, tonsillopexy, that means uh, coagulating the, the tonsils, rounding them up uh, in the cerebellum, You've got all this space behind the, the cerebellum, and now this is quite opened up, whereas on this side, on the left side, it's kind of closed over, right? So I think you can immediately see the difference between the two, and that's, um, that's what I would consider to be a good result. And I usually quote uh, patients who have had carry one malformation, a 90 to 95% success rate of improvement in their symptoms and their radiology. Uh, but there are some failures, and I'll show you an example of uh, failure as uh, the presentation goes on. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.